afternoon, everybody. Nice to see all of you here. And, and welcome to our annual uh, results press conference. Uh, glad to see that today is a, it's a very nice day. So uh, we hope to keep you in good mood uh, here during our uh, presentation. Uh, I will start uh, in the presentation and will give you an, an overview of the results of last year. Uh, then we will talk about the key developments uh, that you cannot see only in the numbers uh, of what has been achieved and how we are doing in some of the of the key business areas and that parents come and say uh, we'll handle that part and then at the end which I think you're also interested we will cover uh, our strategy going forward uh, and, and how Raiffeisen plans to uh, to do its future strategy here in Hungary. So starting with the results, our financial performance, I would say, shows a visible improvement compared to last year or the last years. So we are definitely on a good trend. And I would say contrary to some other peer banks we have here in this country who have shown a sizable loss this year, I mean, we still have a loss. This cannot hide that. However, the loss is uh, substantially lower than last year and the year before. Uh, it is a 31.2 billion, but it's lower by 34% or more than a third than the year before. Our operating income, and I'll show some more details on that, is at the same level as last year, but we, in this case we exclude the charge on of the transaction tax. So if I take out the transaction tax to compare apples with apples, it's practically the same level as last year because normally we show it as income, but then we also show it as cost. And you can see that on the, on the next page. So, But I think operating income with this lower interest level uh, has been kept at the same, uh, at the same uh, level as last year is, I think, uh, quite a big achievement. Uh, and the, uh, the, the provisioning uh, has decreased, which is the major thing. The, the risk costs have decreased by 36% compared to the year before. Uh, we see that uh, as a positive development and also as a trend going forward. Uh, and we managed to get expenses down by another 3%. I mean, we uh, reduced expenses over the last uh, four years of over 30%. Uh, and this is continuing. So despite uh, lower volumes uh, here on the asset and liability side, so customer loans and deposits, uh, interest margins were largely kept at the level uh, and despite this much lower interest rate environment. If you look at the, at the detailed results, you see a decline in interest income. Uh, as I mentioned, mainly due to the lower volumes. Uh, and you see here a huge increase in commission and fee income of 61%, but that huge increase is due to the transaction tax pass uh, over to the customers. By the way, however, even without this, there would have been an increase of about 11 or 12%, even if I take out the complete transaction tax. So the commission income would have grown anyhow quite substantially to the year uh, before. The trading income was positive in the last year, which meant a better operating income by 12% uh, in, in 2013 <coughs> compared to the year before. So uh, the, the other result, if you may ask, that includes then the uh, the actual cost of the transaction tax in addition to the banking tax. So it's the full banking tax plus the one-off charge that we received uh, on the extra transaction tax in the second quarter of last year plus the normal transaction tax. Uh, and these are the main elements of the uh, much higher other negative result than the year before. If you look at the, at the volume side, uh, yes, we are down in both uh, loans and deposits from, from last year. Uh, on, on the lending side, uh, we still see a difficulty and we'll get to that 
in terms of the demand uh, from our uh, main customers here and uh, I mean a lot of the uh, of the lending uh, to corporates is short term so therefore uh, it's not so easy to to pick up the same uh, level as last year despite the funding for growth uh, program on the deposit side we reduced even more uh, but in reality uh, and I also show that uh, that was uh, not totally unintentional uh, to reduce some of the expensive deposits that we had in, in our bank. If I move on, uh, on the balance sheet data, it's maybe quite interesting to see how the composition is changing. The composition between local and foreign currency assets clearly this is something we want to see, I guess also the National Bank wants to see that assets are shifting more from foreign currency to local, to foreign. Uh, and, and here you see this continuous change. We are now at 40, 60 more or less, 41% is uh, in local currency of all customer loans uh, and, and 59 in foreign currency and the majority now is Euro and no longer Swiss francs, but it is changing slowly. Uh, here, so there's still 44% of that 59 is in Swiss francs. Uh, on the liability side, it's more or less 70 30, 70 local currency, foreign, and 30% foreign currency, which is mostly euro. It's a little bit of US dollars in there uh, and Swiss francs, but it's mostly euro. If you look at the at the risk overview, that is quite telling, I believe, and you can see quite a lot. So, on the one hand, we still have a very high non-performing loan ratio uh, of, you can see that 29%, which has slightly grown even over last year. The reason it has grown is if your total loan volume goes down uh, and your total non-performing loans more or less are stable because you're, you're, you're not selling them or you're not getting rid of them uh, quickly, then your ratio keeps uh, increasing uh, here. Uh, and I also would like to add here, this is not just a simple calculation of the so-called 90 plus. So, uh, like you have normally that you say after 90 days overdue, a loan is classified as non-performing. We actually have tougher criteria that even loans that are still performing uh, or have a much uh, a lower overdue can be classified uh, as non-performing. Uh, and we are here very conservative in our definition of non-performing uh, loans. And the coverage ratio, which is the ratio of risk cost to risk provisions compared to the total uh, non-performing loans, has been increased last year uh, from 60 to 64 percent, which I think is quite a healthy uh, coverage. What you can see on the other side of the, of the slide is uh, that there was a decline in the risk cost for both major segments. So both on the retail segments, uh, where it was even uh, higher from 33 to 18 billion, but also on the corporate segment from 25 to 21 billion. And uh, we see it specifically on the corporate side, we see a positive trend that I think from, the, from that angle, the worst seems to be over after the economic uh, and financial crisis that started in 2008-2009. If you look at the, at the funding and the capital side, uh, I mean also here you have to look at uh, be beyond just the simple numbers. The loan deposit ratio, the official one, has actually grown again from 108 to 123 percent uh, here uh, but you should please uh, note that this official uh, rate does not include the funds we get from the national bank for the funding for growth program as well as the cheaper funding from exim for the for the uh, for the export financing uh, and if you include those plus our own issued bonds then our real loan deposit ratio is very close to 100. So we are self-funding in this uh, uh, in, in Hungary here. And that was also one reason I said 
we didn't need extra liquidity, extra deposits that are expensive from retail customers. If you have to place those extra deposits with a national bank and you practically get very low return on that. So you pay more than what you get back. And therefore, we are not concerned about this ratio. We are very, uh, uh, you know, uh, very okay uh, and, uh, and relaxed about the current ratio that we have, uh, that our funding and liquidity position is very strong. Uh, Capital-wise, uh, we have a capital ratio of 11.5%, which is on, on peer, uh, sorry, pillar one, uh, a standalone ratio, uh, which is up from the year before, uh, and we we have uh, last year put an additional 125 million euro uh, in uh, tier one capital uh, in this bank. So also capital-wise, we feel we are uh, well positioned and well placed, and we have enough capital to fulfill also the new uh, and let's say tougher regulations, both local ones and from Basel III. If you look at market share wise, uh, then I think we're still a strong player in this market. Uh, specifically on the corporate side with our share of 11% uh, on, on loans and 10% on the deposit side, uh, that is a, a major factor in, uh, in, in the country. Uh, retail, private individuals, it's somewhat less. Uh, in between 5 and 6 uh, percent depending on loans and deposit side but overall uh, we have a share uh, in, in the customer business between 7 percent on deposits, 9 percent on loans which is not much changed uh, from, from the past. The balance sheet total in reality I don't care uh, because I'm, I care about the total loans and deposit side it shows more the market share not the balance sheet total uh, itself because we are a customer-based business and not uh, one that focuses on other types of uh, uh, you know, proprietary trading business. A few words uh, before we come back to the, uh, to the business developments here, uh, and I'll do that quickly. So we believe that the Eurozone uh, this year will show a reasonable uh, recovery and growth trend of 1.5%, which also will help the Hungarian economy and uh, our forecast at the moment, which is, I think, uh, quite common uh, with others, uh, is about a 2% for GDP growth in Hungary for this year, so we, we should see a, a, a decent uh, overall growth. The average inflation forecast is about 1%, 1.1%. Also, that is not a concern right now, but something uh, I think also the National Bank has said there's a likelihood that this will start growing again, uh, that this will become 3% uh, or more uh, next year. Um, and, and for me, that also means that the interest rate easing cycle is coming to an end uh, here. There is not much further room to reduce the, the interest rate uh, uh, level. Uh, and, and I think this is either the end or very close to the easing uh, cycle. Uh, the export sector clearly still is a driver uh, of the economy. Uh, that is car and car suppliers uh, that you know. Construction is increasing, but primarily due to public sector uh, investments uh, here. And what the real estate market is, which I think is important, you need, you need a kind of improving real estate market if you want the economy as such to improve further. We at least see that the bottom has been reached uh, uh, here. Now, on the commercial side, we don't see yet an improvement, but we at least don't see a further falling uh, of, uh, of prices uh, there. On the residential side, we see some improvement in the main cities like Budapest, uh, uh, not on the countryside, clearly, because there, there is no market, there's no liquidity. And by the way, the huge amount of, of houses that are there to be sold uh, will keep a lid on the, on the prices. So also here, I don't see a, a very strong recovery anytime soon. And these are some, some issues that will be with us, but we should have reached the bottom uh, by now. 
uh, and that is at least some, uh, some good sign. With that, I would pass on here to, uh, to parents Kem and say here on the business side, and then I will make some closing remarks before we open up to questions.